Welcome to experiment 16, a determination of the concentration of an unknown calcium chloride solution. Um, so, to, uh, to get started, uh, what we're going to be doing in this lab is uh, conducting a reaction where we're going to take sodium carbonate, allow it to react with calcium chloride. These are both soluble salts, but it'll form an insoluble calcium carbonate, which we can then weigh and determine how many moles of calcium carbonate there are, and then we work backwards, and uh, based on our knowledge of how many moles of calcium carbonate they are, or there is, we know how many moles of calcium chloride uh, was originally used. We also know the volume of that solution, and so we can calculate the molarity of that solution. Okay, so um, for openers here, something that's very important in this reaction which again, uh, we're taking calcium chloride and sodium carbonate, and that's forming our solid calcium carbonate uh, plus the leftover salt, which stays in solution. So in the original setup that we're doing here, we're taking uh, approximately 40 mils of one molar calcium chloride, or sorry, the sodium carbonate. So we have 40 mils of this, and that's one molar or mole per liter. And we're combining 25 mils of the calcium chloride solution, which we have to look on the bottle to see its concentration and it is important, uh, we're going to call that one 0 0.5001 uh, molar or moles per liter. So what we have here then is if we take these uh, quantities, the 25 mils of 0.5 molar, the product of those two numbers gives us 12.5 millimoles of the calcium ion. Doing the same thing with these guys, uh, 40 times 1 uh, is going to give me 40 millimoles of carbonate. It's a one-to-one -one reaction, so very clearly this is our limiting reagent. And again, that's important because that's what we're going to use to um, do all our calculations. The, the actual volume here, whether it's 40 or 50 mils, really doesn't matter. If this is 1 molar or 1.1 molar or 0.9 molar, again, that's not going to matter. The important numbers that we, we measured out very uh, precisely, the 25 mils of calcium chloride, and that it had been uh, standardized um, very, very close to um, 0.5, or more importantly, we know exactly what that is. Okay, when these guys react, again, they form calcium carbonate. Um, calcium carbonate is a very, very abundant material. If you drive from here to... Colorado, uh, half the rocks you pass are going to be limestone, which is calcium carbonate. Um, marble is also calcium carbonate. Tufa at Mono Lake. Um, the, uh, the scale that you get on your car windshields after you wash it, calcium carbonate. Very, very common. It's also the starting material to make cement. Um, so it's mined uh, by the, you know, I don't know if it's billions of tons, but it might as well be huge, huge amounts. So insoluble, that's what we're going to form. Okay, so um, the actual process of doing this, we make them, uh, we then filter the calcium carbonate through a piece of filter paper that was on that original slide. Uh, we dry it in the oven to uh, drive off all the water, and then we weigh it on a second day of lab. So let's just say we've done all that. And here's our data. So on your data sheet, go ahead and write this down. Um, but we've got the original molarity of the sodium carbonate uh, is one molar. The molarity of the calcium chloride solution for the known solution is 0 0.5001 molar. Uh, the milliliters of the calcium chloride we used, 25 mils or 0 0.025 liters. And then after we've done the experiment, um, we found that the, uh, um, we're doing the experiment, that the filter paper and the Petri dish before we used them were 36.211 grams. Once we'd collected and dried the uh, calcium carbonate product, 
the combined mass now including that precipitate is 37.433 grams. Okay, so that's our part one. Uh, this is our known solution. So again, we knew this one going in. We're seeing how well the experiment worked. Uh, might as well do our data for part two. So in part two, we grabbed unknown 007. Uh, we're still using that same one molar sodium carbonate solution. We don't know what the concentration of the calcium chloride is here. That's what we have to find out. Um, but we're using 25 mils of it, or 0 0.025 liters. The second half of the Petri dish with a new piece of filter paper is 39.403 grams. And once we've collected and dried our product, uh, we have a combined mass, now again, with the precipitate of 40.391 grams. Okay, so again, these are the unknowns, um, and you'll do the calculations uh, on those. Okay, actual calculations. Uh, first thing we have to do is calculate the uh, mass of our precipitate. And so uh, we saw that we had um, the combined mass of the precipitate with the Petri dish with the filter paper, if I recall, was 37.433 grams. The uh, Petri dish and the paper itself before use was 36.211 grams, giving us a difference of 1.222. Grams. All right, the moles of calcium carbonate. Um, we have to calculate what the molar mass of that is. Calcium from the periodic table is 40.1 grams per mole. Carbon is 12.0, and oxygen is 16.00. Of course, there's three of those. So we add those all together, and you get a molar mass of the carbon calcium carbonate of 100. 0.1 grams per mole. So what we need to do is convert this 1.222 grams into moles. That is a gram to mole conversion. So I'll take my 1.222 grams of calcium carbonate. Multiply that by one mole of the calcium carbonate is, uh, what do we say, 100.1 grams of the calcium carbonate. Grams cancel, and I'm left with uh, moles. And let's see, that works out to be 0 0.01221 Okay, and now we need to uh, calculate the molarity. The important thing here is defining what molarity is. So molarity is defined as moles of solute, in this case moles of the calcium chloride, and we'll just kind of skip over that this is calcium carbonate, but it's a one-to-one -one reaction, so maybe I should do that as a, as a separate calculation. Uh, in any case, uh, moles of calcium chloride over the volume or liters of solution that we used, okay? And that's the original 25 mils, not the combined um, volumes. All right, so uh, we, we have that as 0 0.01221 moles over um, 0 0.0250 liters. That's our 25 mils. Plug those numbers into a calculator and we get 0 0.488 moles per liter or molar. Because I can squeeze it in there, right? Okay, um, the last little part of this is calculating a percent error. Um, we always need to define exactly what this would be. In this context, our error is going to be equal to the experimental value minus the true value, what was actually on the bottle, 
and that is that difference is going to be divided by the true value uh, of course times 100. All right so when I plug in my numbers uh, my experimental was 0 0.488 The literature, or rather the value on the side of the bottle, was 0 0.5001. And we divide that by the 0 0.5001 molar. And make sure when you do these calculations that you actually calculate this difference. So the 0.488 minus 0.5001 equals, come up with a value, and divide that by the... Um, 0.501. If you just punch it in literally 0.488 minus 0.5 divided by 0.5, um, your PEMDAS rules turn that into 0.488 minus 1, so you get a negative 0.52 or something. All right, um, however that works, we plug in these numbers and uh, it'll work out to be a negative 2.4 percent. The negative maybe isn't really important, um, but the way we set this up, negative means that we were below the true value, positive would be that we were above. Um, so my error here was 2.4%, which makes sense. Uh, you know, it's 0 0.488, it's a little bit less than the 0 0.5. Okay, so uh, that was the uh, known solution. And now you've got to take the unknown that we already wrote the data for uh, on the reverse page and um, just repeat these calculations. And again, the important thing is defining stuff. What's our definition of moles? I guess it's the only one that's important there. So don't be lazy. Take those extra steps and write things out. Okay, um, let's see. For a write-up for this one, um, leave that to your particular lab instructor, um, but be consistent. I think it will be consistent with what we've done on the last couple. All right, short and sweet. Till next time, goodbye.